Welcome to today's lecture. My name is Pamidele Otumoso. I will be teaching this foundational course in biology. And our topic for today is microbial interaction. If you have any question or clarification on any part of this lecture, kindly drop it as a comment in the comment box and I will respond back to you. Now, let us go into this lecture. Don't forget to click on subscribe and enable notifications so that you can be notified as soon as I drop new lectures. Thank you. Biological interactions. We'll be talking about biological interactions today. And when we say biological interaction, we are talking about relationship between living organisms, how they interact with their environment, the consequences of this interaction and its uh, effects. How does it affect the total environment, the ecosystem, the habitat? And these interactions are essential in shaping the survival of the microorganism in the ecosystem and the functioning as well. And there are interactions between species of microorganisms and other living organisms, which are completely different from one another. And these interactions between them are usually unique and specific sometimes, and sometimes it is diverse. This biological interaction can occur between similar organisms, that is, the same species of organisms, and we call this type of interaction intraspecific interaction. Now, when this interaction occurs between different organisms, that is, organisms that are not related to each other. We call it interspecific interaction. So interspecific interaction is that that happen between two different organisms, perhaps microorganism and uh, plants, or microorganism and animal, or two different microorganisms, such as a bacteria and fungi, while intraspecific is between the same organisms, such as bacteria and bacteria. In these biological interactions, interspecific interaction is most commonly studied. It is very important in biology because it occurs between different organisms or different species. And the consequences of this interaction is our main focus in biological interaction. Hence, biological interactions that affect interspecies are very important. And this is what we are going to be looking at mostly in most of our lecture. Now, we have examples of biological interaction types. We have plant microbe interaction. This can occur between plants and a growth promoting bacteria. When bacteria grows at the root of certain plant, example, Azotobacter that grow in the root of leguminous plant. It helps in fixing nitrogen into the soil, which promotes the growth of plant. So that is plant microbe interaction. We also have animal microbe interaction and human microbe interaction. These two interactions are similar. When animal interacts, uh, microorganisms interact with animals or interact with humans, they can cause disease, infections. They can also help in digestion. They can also help in defense. They can help in so many ways in the body or system of the animal or humans. So the microbe human and microbe animal interaction are similar. So we also have microbe environment interaction when microorganisms interact with the environment. Some can contaminate the water, some can clean up the polluted water. When we have uh, crude oil polluting the environment, there are certain microorganisms that can actually degrade this crude oil and they can make the water become useful, become potable once again. We also have so many so other microorganisms that interact with the soil. It also helps in enriching the soil, such as we have. We have some of them that are found growing below the root of plants and they enrich the soil. Some of them also release certain toxic materials into the soil that prevent other microorganisms from growing. Example is penicillin. As we all know, penicillin was obtained from the 
uh, organism that was found in the soil, fungi. So this is the way microorganisms interact with the environment. Lastly is microbe microbe interaction, and this is our main focus in this topic. Microbe microbe interaction is a type of interaction that happens between two microorganisms, irrespective of their species. So when they interact, we are concerned about their consequences. And the significance of microbe microbe interaction is in the knowledge of the outcome of their relationship, such as competition, cooperation, coexistence, and driving of evolutionary changes. As microbiologists, we depend on their interaction for so many purposes. Hence, this study is very important. Now, we want to look at microbial interaction. Microbial interaction is defined as a molecular interaction where one group of microorganisms, e.g. bacteria, virus, algae, fungi, and so on, interact with one another to establish stability relationship for survival. This can be positive or negative depending on the organism involved and it plays crucial role in the health of the environment and the ecosystem. You see, microbial interactions are common everywhere and they are, we have diverse type of microbial interaction and it's critically important in the functioning of any biological community. When I say they are critically important in any uh, biological community because their role are so important. It determines the survival of that environment. It can either lead to increment of the population or decrease of the population. And this can form and inform information for humans, for controllers to know how to use this to their advantage. And it's also crucial in global biogeochemistry. This relationship are of two types. We have the obligate and the facultative interaction. Relationship between microorganisms can be obligate. That means both organisms entirely depend on each other for survival. They cannot survive alone. They have to cooperate to survive. While facultative interaction means when these two organisms come together, they can interact for survival. And when they don't come together, they can independently survive. So they are coming together is for their benefit. They are not coming together, can, they can also perform, they can function as individual entity. But when we are talking about obligate relationship, these are relationships that depend on their cooperation for their survival. In microbial interaction, the consequences, as we said before, is one of the most important aspects of this study. Consequences of their interaction. So when they interact together, the consequences can be positive or negative. It can bring up a positive effect in the environment or within them, or a negative event, effect on the microorganisms that are involved. So we have a positive microbial interaction and negative microbial interaction. And we are going to look at this one after the other. So positive interaction is characterized by mutual benefit or at least uh, benefit to one organism and the other organism does not feel harm or injured. When one organism enjoys the relationship and the other one does not enjoy the relationship but is not having any significant negative impact on that organism, it is still positive interaction. Mathematically speaking, when we say positive times positive is positive. Positive times neutral goes to positive. So positive interactions are interactions that mutual benefit its experience and or one organism benefit and the other one does not benefit but is not injured. So this positive interaction has been divided into three major types, which are based on their peculiarities and characteristics. And we will look at them. We also have negative interaction. In this negative interaction, we have two microbial populations interacting with one another. One organism benefits, 
while the other organism does not benefit and is negatively affected. Sometimes it leads to death. Sometimes it leads to inhibition of their growth. Sometimes it causes disability of the organism. So, so organism can attack another organism or inhibit the growth of the other organism for their own personal survival and food source in the environment. This usually happens when organisms compete for food, for space, and so on. We will look at this in details. So let us take a look at these two interactions in detail, then we examine them one after the other. Under the positive interaction, we have mutualism, we have the proto-cooperation, and we have commensalism. Now, these interactions are the most common among microbial interactions that is positively known. Those positive interactions are usually experienced in these three types of interaction. And we will look at these uh, interactions one after the other. Then we go to the examples of uh, these interactions and look at how they are so unique from one another. Mutualism. Mutualism is a type of microbial interaction in which two organisms interact together for their benefit, for their coexistence. In this type of interaction, it is an obligatory interaction. Obligatory in the sense that these two organisms must cooperate together for their survival. If the two organisms decide not to cooperate, the two organisms will suffer. If one organism decides not to cooperate in this relationship, the two organisms will suffer. Hence, the survival of their relationship or existence depends on their relationship, I mean, on their cooperation. And it is an obligatory relationship. The outcome is beneficial for the two organisms. It is a positive interaction, and their survival depends entirely on it. Mutualism usually occurs among interspecific organisms. That is, it occurs between two different organisms. Because if two organisms that similar organisms, same organism come together, there's nothing to gain, there's nothing to lose. They are used to each other, there's nothing to give to each other. But when two organisms interact, that they are different, there's something to add to each other, and there's something to benefit. Now, in mutual relationship, there are certain features that distinguish a mutual relationship from every other relationship. That is, characteristics of mutual relationship. These features must be observed. If it doesn't have any of these features, then it is not mutual. If it doesn't have everything, at least one out of these features must be, uh, must be present. Number one is that the relationship is very specific between these organisms. That is, the organisms that are involved are specifically involved in this relationship. If organism A and B interact together, they can interact with C. A will not interact with C, B will not interact with C. A and B are only interacting and they cannot be replaced by another species. That is number one. Number two is that it requires them to be physical contact, close contact. They must have a very close contact. They must not, there's, there's no gap between them. There's no space between them. They are not interacting from afar. They are not interacting from distance. They are interacting closely. They are close together. And usually they are dependent on their metabolic product. That is the third characteristic. They usually depend on their metabolic product that is, organism A, metabolic product or product of its metabolism is a substrate for organism B. And something from organism B is also useful for organism A. So the relationship is kind of interwoven together and they depend on each other for their survival. The last characteristic is that they usually create certain unique habitats that cannot be occupied by other species. These habitats can be occupied by them alone and it allows them to behave as if they are single organisms. In this situation, when they interact together, they form specific interaction. I mean, this interaction gives them specific habitats. 
this specific habitat makes them to behave like a single organism. Somebody who is not a biologist we think is a single organism, but a biologist we know this is a combination of two organisms behaving as one organism. So we are going to look at examples, specific examples of mutual relationship. The first example is fungi and algae relationship. The second one is protozoan termite relationship. And the third one is paramecium chlorella relationship. So let's look at this relationship one after the other. Fungi algae relationship is often known as lichens. Lichen is an excellent example of mutualism. When two organisms come together, two different organisms, a fungi is different from an algae. A fungi are saprophytes. Fungi are saprophytes, while algae are not saprophytes. Algae manufacture their own food. Algae are photoautotrophic organisms. They have the ability to carry out photosynthesis. Saprophytes cannot carry out photosynthesis. They depend on dead organic matter which they can assimilate after breaking down the nutrients and after breaking them down into absorbable nutrients. So now, what, what happened between them? The fungi, since it cannot manufacture its own food substances, will have to depend on algae for the manufacturing of food via photosynthesis. Remember, they are close together according to the characteristics. There is no space between them. They behave as one organism. So the algae carry out photosynthesis and the nutrient that is normally supposed to be uh, uh, obtained from dead organic substances are what the algae will produce via a photo. So what does the fungi do in return? Usually algae in this case does not have ability to absorb the ultraviolet rays that is present in the sunlight because algae requires sunlight for photosynthesis and sometimes the sunlight can be very intense. The high temperature can kill the algae but this temperature can be absorbed by the fungi. The fungi has the ability, the intensity of the sun can lead to the death, it can damage the algae cell. So the fungi have to absorb the ultraviolet rays while the algae manufacture the food. So they both survive by cooperating together. So the absorbing of the ultraviolet trees allow the algae to survive. The manufacturing of the food allows the fungi to survive. So lichen is a combination of both algae and fungi. And they behave as one organism that they call lichens. Lichen grow very slowly. They can colonize different habitats that will not permit the growth of other organisms. And this allows them to survive so long. Another example is protozoan termite relationship. In this protozoan termite relationship, the classical example of mutualism in which a flagellated uh, protozoan lives in the gut of a termite. Now, what do termites eat? Termites typically they eat roots. So, when termites eat roots, they are unable to digest this wood because the wood contains cellulose or lingue, which needs certain enzymes for quick digestion. In order for it to be assimilated to their cell for normal function. Now, what if flagellated uh, protozoan does is that they feed on the cellulose and they produce enzymes that help to digest the lignin or cellulose and metabolize into acetic acid, which is actually needed by termite for its own utilization. Now, when they do this, the termite is able to now derive its own nutrients from the wood that is being consumed whereby the flagellated protozoa is now able to also have a safe passage i mean it gets protection in the gut of the termites so the termites help the protozoa in terms of protection while the flagellated protozoa helps the uh, termite in terms of breaking down its food nutrients both of these benefit from the relationship and it is under obligations. If the termite decides not to have the uh, flagellated protosa in the gut, that means it will be difficult for the termite to feed. While the protosa will have no place to stay, 
Eventually, both organisms will die because the flagellated protozoans will be exposed to predators, while the termite will also have its food being unable to digest and to eventually lead to death. Another example is the uh, Paramecium and Florella. Florella is an algae, it's a microalgae, whereas the Paramecium is a protozoan that is well known. So the Paramecium is the host having the Florella within its cytoplasm. Now, because the protozoan is bigger in size, it can accommodate the algae within its cytoplasm, and the algae usually manufactures its own food by photosynthesis. And when it does this, the, the algae provide the protozoan partner with organic carbon and oxygen. In turn, the protozoan provides protection and motility for the algae as well as carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide for the algae is used for its own substrate for manufacturing of uh, its own food via photosynthesis, while the algae, why I mean, why the paramecium which gives the uh, algae a protection. Now the chlorella carry photosynthesis, carry out photosynthesis and release oxygen. This oxygen that is released within the cytoplasm of the paramecium helps the paramecium to survive during anaerobic condition. Because uh, paramecium is usually in an aquatic environment and deep within the aquatic environment, there's limitation in oxygen acquisition. So it allows the Paramecium to survive during competition for oxygen. So, whenever the paramecium finds itself in an anaerobic environment, the, the chlorella within it provides oxygen that enables it to survive, while the paramecium also provides motility, protection, and other growth factor for the chlorella to survive. In this way, both the algae and the protozoa are able to uh, mutually contribute to their survival based on their need to survive in the environment. The second type of positive interaction is proto-corporation. We have talked about the example of mutualism the example of mutualism that we talked about were those that we talked about in, as the examples. Now, mutualism has been concluded. We are now talking about proto cooperation as another type of positive microbial interaction. In this proto cooperation, it is a typical type of interaction that looks like mutualism in nature. Is a, type, is a typical type of interaction that is similar to mutualism. But the only difference in this type of uh, interaction is that the organism are not under any obligation. But whatever happens in this interaction is similar to mutualism. Now, being a facultative interaction means that these organisms are not compared to interact together they can individually survive without coming together for mutual benefit. Whereas in mutual interaction, these organisms are compelled to cooperate together for their survival. Proto cooperation means two organisms involved are associated in a mutual beneficial relationship which is not under obligation. They can individually survive without one another. Now, example of this is the relationship between Lactobacillus bulgaricus and Streptococcus thermophilus. These two bacteria are in a symbiotic relationship in terms of metabolic product that is important for their mutual growth. The Lactobacillus needs uh, the acid medium for its growth. Being a typical lactic acid bacteria, it needs an acidic environment. So the more acidic environment that is produced in this environment, it simulates its growth. Whereas the Streptococcus thermophilus produce acids 
out of his own metabolic activity, such as pyruvic acid, formic acid, and folic acid. And these acids stimulate the growth of Lactobacillus bulgaricus. Whereas Lactobacillus bulgaricus can also produce peptide and free amino acid out of his own metabolic activity to also stimulate the growth of Cercus amophilus. So what they do is that two of them come together and benefit from their metabolic activities. Whereas if they individually stay apart, lactic acid bacteria can actually find a way to survive, while Cercus will also find a way to survive. So they are not compelled to remain together under any circumstances. When they come together, they can always function together for their individual survival. The last example, the last type of positive interaction is commensalism. I know commensalism is a, is a part of uh, positive interaction that is well known. However, we are talking about the microbial level. It is the third type of interaction among microorganisms, and it is a type of interaction that is considered as unidirectional association. When we say unidirectional association, it means that it's an association that goes in a one way, it does not have a two way benefit. One way benefit means only one organism is benefiting, but the other organism neither benefited and neither harm. It is not benefited and it's not harm. So it is a relationship that is not that is not under obligatory and it is it, it allows for independence. There is means for independence. The only thing that is the only thing that is uh, there that is that one organism is benefiting and the other organism is not benefiting. So there is only one benefactor in this relationship. The other the other organism that is involved is not benefiting anything and it is not having any negative impact on this relationship. Example of commensalism is the non-pathogenic E. coli in the intestine of humans. The non-pathogenic E. coli is a type of E. coli that does not cause disease. They are actually normal flora of the gut of humans, animals, and so on. So they help in the digestion of food and other aspects of their metabolic activity. So the non-pathogenic E. coli is actually an organism that is found to be a facultative anaerobic bacteria. When we say facultative anaerobic bacteria, it means that this organism has the ability to survive in the absence of presence of oxygen. And now we have another organism which is an obligate anaerobes. Obligate anaerobes are organisms that cannot live in the presence of oxygen. They do not grow well in the presence of oxygen, so they prefer an environment which does not have oxygen. Example of this is bacteroides. So now what happens? E. coli, which is the host in this situation, provides a medium for bacteroides to survive by undergoing metabolic activities using the appropriate medium to release carbon dioxide for bacteroides to survive. So the bacteroides is the only organism that benefits from this situation, whereas E. coli does not benefit from the situation. But it can also grow at its own pace. It can decide to grow on its own, and it can decide to be in relationship with bacteroides for bacteroides survival. However, bacteroides too can do without E. coli. But the only thing is that it is benefiting from the association with E. coli in this scenario. So that is the examples and types of microbial interaction at a positive focus. We are now going to look at 